hi beautiful welcome back to my channel for today's video i am going to share with you my thoughts and opinions on makeup no buy so i'm trying to challenge myself before 2020 ends my goal is to try to finish at least two eyeshadow palettes two foundations etc etc also in addition to that quarantine kind of made me go through my whole collection see what i like see what i don't like makeup is so expensive as we all know it and i have already purchased the makeup products from specific brands that are not cruelty free so i've already spend my money i lost money and i've given them profit already so for me to be able to move on i just have to do myself a favor and finish up the products that i purchased from these brands because at the end of the day i'm trying to eliminate waste i'm trying to use up what i have for my own satisfaction and i'm trying to contribute positively to the environment i have been seeing a lot of project pan videos recently and obviously being curious i took a deep dive and it's actually a lot of fun i googled a lot of images of project pans and it's so satisfying to see like a full eyeshadow palette that has been used up down to the brim as well as foundation bottles highlighters face powders lipsticks and I thought it'd be nice to see that in my collection. Also, for a normal girl that does not do makeup as a job, I find it ridiculous on how much makeup I actually do have. So I really need to get cracking and try to get down and use up whatever I have before it goes to waste. So for my project pen, I have decided that I'm going to do a roll over pen. I'm not going to promise you anything because as far as I know, you do the project pan based on what works for you so if this works well for me i will continue to doing a rollover project pan if it doesn't then i might experiment and try different types of project pan i've already used up half of the products that i'm about to show you so that way i could monitor how much i have and it'll be quicker for me to just roll over I have two to share with you. I have the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation and this one is in the shade 310. This is a little bit too dark for my skin tone. I try to make it work by either mixing my lighter foundation or just a moisturizer to kind of tone down the darkness. But I actually quite like this foundation. You only need a teeny tiny bit and it goes a really long way. It's very full coverage and I've also marked on where i am at that way it'll be easier for me to monitor how long it took me to fully finish the whole bottle the other foundation i have is this juice beauty phyto pigments flawless serum foundation oh my gosh the name is so long i've also marked this foundation this is relatively new but i wanted to use this up because the foundation has got skincare ingredients and i do know that whenever a product has got more of a skincare ingredients they tend to expire a little bit quicker than just a normal foundation that's how much i've used up and that's how much i have left and i find that i use this foundation on the daily because it's very lightweight i like the finish that it gives I have three to share with you. I have the MAC Studio Fix Perfecting Stick and this one is in the shade NC35. I actually like this concealer. It's very compact, very travel friendly. It's very creamy for what it is because usually stick concealers are very thick and very hard to work with but this one is quite thin in formula. It's very blendable. It's best to blend this with your finger because it just seeps into the skin making you look like you're not wearing anything i don't have a problem with using this concealer all over my face i feel like it evens out my face gets rid of the redness and the dark spots and i'm good to go unfortunately i'm not going to repurchase any mac product once i finish up my mac products because as you guys are all aware mac is not cruelty free another non-cruelty free brand is the YSL so this is the Touche Eclat Radiant Touch I don't even know the reason why I purchased this it does not do anything 
for me. If anything, it basically just gives me a luminous effect on the under eye and that's basically it. Doesn't even conceal, doesn't add any sort of coverage and it's so expensive for what you get. So I'm trying to use this up as much as I hate this because I paid money for it and it's not even funny. The other concealer is the Australis Fresh and Flawless Concealer. I think I have about four or three uses out of this. Like clearly I could see you through the tube but because I love this concealer so much I'm trying to scrape every bit of it and use this up so that's gonna not take me a long time probably within a month or so it'll be gone or not even a month maybe two weeks I have this Rimmel Insta Duo stick and this one is in the shade dark I'm so proud on how much I've used this contour stick this is not gonna take me a long time to finish up Unfortunately, I'm not going to use up the other side, which is the highlighter, because I don't like the formula. It has that balmy, greasy formula that whenever you set it with powder or any powder highlighter, it goes like bunchy and crepey and clay looking. It's gross, but the contour stick I love, so I'm going to use that up. For a liquid highlighter, I have this Maybelline strobe liquid illuminating highlighter and this one is in the shade medium i like to mix it in with my mattifying foundation i did try to put this underneath my face before foundation for a more glowy bronzy look and it's quite nice i've marked this so i have about this much i'm not sure if that's right because on two products like this it's kind of hard to determine how much you actually have so We'll see how we go, but I'm going to try to finish that up. I have one, two, three, four. I have four face powders. So for face powder, these are specifically just for setting my face. I'm going to start with the translucent powder. I have this tub right here. And this is a Filipino makeup brand called Nishido. I purchased this two years ago when we went to Philippines. Since then, I've been trying to dabble into using this once in a while, but now I really want to use this up. Probably use that much. So for translucent powder to be used that well, it's not that bad. So I feel like if I come in then I could fully finish this because I've already finished my Colourpop translucent powder which I'm so proud of so I'm going to share with you my empties in the future but for now we're focusing on this one I have this Bare Minerals Touch Up Veil Powder this one has got SPF 15 I believe they have repackaged this it now comes in like a circle compact but I love this powder one because it has built in spf and two it's such a good on the go powder and look how much i've used up so if i truly commit to this in no time i'll finish this up and i can move on to the other powders that i have i'm actually quite proud another compact powder is this one right here from mac this is the studio fix powder and i have nc42 this is my third compact that i purchased back in the day when i started out with makeup i exclusively purchased a lot of mac products and i was able to finish six bottles of foundation two of these one highlighter and a few setting sprays and concealer unfortunately not the blush because blush you don't really go through it so much i've also hit pan on this unfortunately the shade is a little bit darker on my skin tone this is more for summer so when summer hits i'm excited to use this up another face powder is more of like an illuminating powder this is from hourglass and this is the ambient lighting powder in diffused light i specifically like this shade because it has a little bit more of that neutral yellow undertone which is perfect for setting your under eye brightening up like specific parts of your face and so i use this mainly to correct my under eye whenever i use like a very drying concealer or just a fixing powder in general and i've hit pan there's so much product in this compact for the price you pay it better be because this one costs an arm and a leg so i cannot forgive myself if i were to just throw this to the trash another powder that is more so for highlighting is 
this and it's from Hourglass again and this is the ambient lighting palette and this is what it looks like. I've made a huge dent on this middle shade and the bronzy shade here like the shape is not domed anymore there's like a divot in the center. I have not used this as much because I don't like the tone it has more of like a dusty peachy pink undertone which doesn't complement my warm golden skin tone but these two I like for a highlighter and it gives me a more natural highlight and this palette whew, $100 too expensive but I have to use this up for my own satisfaction because I paid money for it <laughs> For bronzer, I have two products. Again, another product from MAC. This is the Mineralized Skin Finish and this is in Dark Deepest. I've hit pen already. See this side? So I'm so proud of that. I actually quite like this powder. I like this better than Give Me Sun because it's less warm but it has enough golden warm to bronze my face. It kind of reminds me of the Bajin Gao bronzer from Fenty Beauty. It's more neutral. It's like neutral golden as opposed to it being like orange. Another bronzer is this one right here from ABH and this is in the shade Saddle. I have used this quite a lot actually when I first purchased this which to my surprise I still did not hit pan. <laughs> this shade right here is a little bit, it's this one right here, so it's a little bit closer to give me sun but it runs a little bit more neutral and has a little bit red sunkissed undertone to it which I quite like so I'm excited to use this up. I have two blushes in here. Again, another product from MAC. This is the powder blush in matte formula and this is in the shade Melba. I remember Nicole Guerrero raving about this and it's such a good neutral pink blush that goes with anything really. I have that on my face right now. It runs more on the peachy type of shade. It's this one right here so it blends right into my bronzer especially if I use the MAC or the ABH bronzer. For a little bit of luminous blush I have this Milani baked blush and this one is in the shade Berry Amore. I actually have used this quite a ton and the dome is still pretty intact. Mine cracked a little bit because I have used this and I have traveled with this but it's such a good blush. A little goes a very long way. It has the nicest sheen and it comes off poorly peachy shade which complements my skin very well. But I only have one to share with you and this is from MAC Fix Plus which is a staple to everyone's makeup kit. I have gone through so many bottles of this from like the full size down to the mini size. It's such a good spray. Unfortunately, I'm not going to repurchase this once I finish this up. So this is how much I have left. So yeah, it's not going to be hard for me to finish a fixing spray. Now these two eyeshadow palettes are the oldest eyeshadow palettes that I own. The first one is this one right here from NARS. Again, NARS is another brand that I used to love and that was back when they were cruelty free. Unfortunately, they started selling physically in mainland China, therefore I stopped supporting them. But oh my god, their products are amazing, especially if you do like bridal makeup. This is such a good all-rounder eyeshadow palette. You have the darker shade, you have the lighter beige shade, and the rest are mostly accent shades, which is so pretty. And it comes with a mirror, but Honestly, the mirror is not good because it gives you this weird... Oh my god, my eyelashes are falling off. Sorry about that. I have to stick my lashes again because <laughs> it was coming off. As I was saying, it's such a good eyeshadow palette. I'm trying to finish it up. I made a huge dent with this shade right here because I use it every day for transition. Another eyeshadow palette that I really want to use up is this Norvina eyeshadow palette. I have traveled with this eyeshadow palette and I have used a few shades. She's a little bit dusty because I used it yesterday. I have made a dent on this three right here because I used that on as transition shades and this one right here as my base shade. So I'm 
excited to use up this eyeshadow palette for me this is my ideal purple tone type of eyeshadow because everything is muted everything can be used on the daily or you can even glam it up i will be dipping in between the nas wanted eyeshadow palette and this one i included a bunch of lip products because personally for me i cannot choose what type of lipstick formula i wanted to use and also my mind keeps changing so it's better to have options than have one and then not use it up i have two lip liners with me today i have one from jordana as you can see i've used her she's very affordable you can get her from any two dollar shop within your area that sells makeup and this is in the shade mahogany i like this because it it has more of that brick red tone to it so if i wear a very nude lipstick i could usually line my lips with this it gives me a nice contour lips for a more natural lip line i have this Maybelline lip liner in collaboration with Gigi Hadid. That's so old. I feel like it's been four years, three years, something like that. Definitely more than three years. But this one is in the shade, I think this is in the shade Tora? Taurus? Tora? I'm not sure. But it's a cool tone, mauve shade, which I actually quite like when it comes to like no makeup makeup i feel like it complements my lips a little bit better because my lips is very pigmented and dark on the rim it kind of tones it down a little bit i only have one lipstick bullet that i really want to use up and this is from mac and this is their luster formula and this is in the shade hug me i have used up the one in velvet teddy which everyone has been raving and i definitely got sucked into purchasing that but this is more of a hybrid between Velvet Teddy and Brave lipstick from MAC. Those two are both matte, but this one is luster and I feel like I favor this one more because I do have dry lips. It's creamy and gives you that glossy effect, so you kind of have a two-in-one. I have this KVD Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. I purchased this when they were still Kat Von D, but now they are called KVD. And this one is in the shade Bow and Arrow. This is such a nice cool tone brown lipstick it's this one right here like i could use this as a contour using a lip brush if i want more of that cool tone type of brown this is the most used everlasting liquid lipstick that i have i did purchase lolita and lolita too but i find that those two are a little bit too warm for my liking the other liquid lipstick i have is this one right here from milani this is the amore matte lip cream in the shade adorable so this one has got more of a pinky brown shade which is right up my alley because i'm into that kind of nude this is a little bit more comfortable than the kvd ever lasting liquid lipstick because it's a little bit more moisturizing and it doesn't make you feel like the moisture has been sucked out of your lips another liquid lipstick is this one right here from models prefer it's an australian makeup brand and this one is in the shade devotee and this one is a little bit more rosy but has that brown undertone so it's that one right there so if i want a little bit of a bolder lip and that's how bold i can go so then i will apply this one again the formula of this is a little bit moussey it's sort of similar to the amore matte lip cream except this is more comfortable than the milani and the kvd beauty i am going to try and use up this physician's formula lip butter in the shade soaking up the sun it has an spf of 15 which will be great for a day-to-day -day basis it has a nice tint so you can see it's more of that coral tint so i like to pair this with the mahogany lip liner and it creates a nice lip combo for an everyday wear and i believe that's all the products that i have make sure you stay tuned for future videos i'm definitely going to be shopping my stash a lot more please make sure to subscribe to my channel and i will catch you on the next video bye